Okay, so this part of the chapter, we call, talk about the discovery of subatomic particles. Atoms have even smaller particles. Um, the first scientist who discovered the electron was J.J. Thomson. J.J. Thomson used the uh, cathode ray experiment to discover the electron. After J.J. Thomson discovered the electron, J.J. Thomson discovered it's a negatively charged particle and it's very uh, light, low mass present in all the atoms. And then um, Millikan, using oil drop experiment, he discovered the charge of an electron. It's a very small charge char and also charged mass ratio. So, um, so this is what Millikan does. And then um, J.J. Thomson now when he discovered the electron he know it's an atomic particle it's a subatomic particle he was continuously uh, searching um, the way the how the atom will look like and then he came up with the plum pudding model at that time the plum pudding model gained extreme popularity plum pudding model think about a plum pudding on the pudding on the top the electrons are like just uh, spread the electrons but his student, Rutherford, didn't want to accept this model because he, he did this experiment, which is very important. I like this experiment very much. Rutherford's gold foil experiment, he took a piece of gold foil, think about aluminum foil, and he passed the alpha particles through it. He noticed most of the particles, most of the alpha particle goes through the uh, film, but 1 in 12 million particles didn't go through. And it, diff it bounces back. Why it bounces back? Because it, that particle meets something in the aluminum foil, right? But most of it empty. So then he discovered atom structure is not the plum pudding model. Atom has most of the empty spaces, but the most highest mass is condensed in a small sphere called nucleus. So this Rutherford discovered the nuclear model. And then a nuclear theory came up with the Rutherford, and then um, that is this is a still this is correct theory we still believe it. Most of the atoms mass and all its positive charge contain in a small core called nucleus. Most of the volume of the atom empty space, and there are many negatively charged electrons outside the nucleus. So he discovered okay, atom has a nucleus. Nucleus has protons and neutrons. And around the nucleus have electrons. Okay. So, um, sorry. <coughs> so these are the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And then these are the charge. If you see the charge, you see the mass of the proton and neutron, which is in the nucleus, has very similar charges. But electron has very small, negative 31, higher than the negative number is smaller the charge. So this is the charges of the uh, subatomic particles. This chart summarizes everything. And then um, now we are moving to another important thing. I know chapter one has a lot of concepts. So that's the purpose of the video. Um, so now, now a uh, number of protons, number of protons we call atomic number it's very important. Atomic number is number of protons given by symbol C. Number of protons or atomic number is unique to an each and every element. None of the two atoms share the same atomic number, same number of protons. So if you see the elements in the periodic table, they arrange according to their increasing atomic number. Increasing atomic number. So example, if you see hydrogen, it is one. Helium, two. Lithium, three, like that. Number of atom increasing, number of atomic number. So, isotopes. Have you heard about isotopes? Isotopes are the, all, the same, um, different forms of the same element. Isotopes have same number of protons, but they have different number of neutrons. Because of that, they have different masses. We call that isotope. So here, this is a way of representing neon 10, 20, 10, 21, 10, 22. So what is this? 10 is always number of protons. 
always if it is a neutral element number of protons and number of electrons same this 20 is neutron so so the this this we call on the top we call sorry this on the top we call mass number mass number is number of protons plus neutrons so here you how many neutrons here because you already know you have 10 protons 20 plus 10 which is 10 neutrons what about this one how many neutrons 11 because 21 negative 10 which is 11 22 negative 10 12 protons so this is another representation chemical symbol z is atomic number a is mass number mass number is always number of protons plus neutrons okay so um isotopes very important section all the elements most of the elements in the periodic table they have isotopes but you don't list all the isotopes example hydrogen has hydrogen 1 h11 h12 h13 but we don't list everything we listed in the periodic table most abundant isotope so example neon has 1020 1021 1022 but we most abundant one is 1020 so that's listed in the okay and then that's isotopes and there's another thing you need to know ions ions has um ions have made like they're charged species ions making by losing or gaining electrons anytime if it is lose electron that means you have less electrons are negatively charged losing electron means less negative charge so you make cation cations are positively charged by losing electrons gaining electrons and ions negatively charged ions. so there are two types of ions atomic mass atomic mass is um uh, is called um, atomic weight it represent all the you consider in order to get the atomic mass you get the um uh, not don't confuse with the atomic mass and the mass number okay Atomic mass is when you calculate the atomic mass, you take all the masses of the isotope into account. This is how you calculate the atomic mass. Uh, example for chlorine. This is the number of protons. This is the atomic mass. You get the atomic mass. You know chlorine has so many isotopes. You get the fraction of the isotope, mass of the isotope. Likewise, you add all the masses, isotope masses. And the fraction so example this question naturally occurring chlorine consists of 75 percent 77 chlorine 35 which is mass this one 24.23 so these only two right to this time so you take the natural abundance multiply by the mass take the natural abundance multiply by the mass get the atomic mass so this is how I did it convert percent abundance you can take um, so here i mean uh, you can take 75 divided by um, 100 or just uh, 75 divided by 100 it will give 0. 0.7577 and then um, you multiply by the mass so this is a 7 0. 0.7577 it's here and you multiply by the mass and then like that and until you add you get the um, atomic mass which is listed in the periodic table as well we use mass spectrometry in the instrumentation to measure the atomic mass. Okay, that is the another end of another important section. And now I am moving to last section in the chapter, which is a mole. What is this mole? Mole is it's a number. Like example, you go to the store, you ask dozen of eggs. <clears throat> you don't say 12 eggs is dozen. Dozen is 12. Mole also a number. The only difference is it's a very big number. One mole is 6.022 into 10 to the power 23. Anything. If you can count 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 is pebbles, it's one mole of pebbles. If you can count 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 is sand particles, one mole of sand. It's like that. The number, like 12 is a dozen, 
Similarly, this number we call Avogadro's number. Let's see how Avogadro's number related to chemistry. If you can count Avogadro's number of atoms, that equal to the atomic weight. Interesting, right? So example, um, um, the value of the mole is equal to the number of atoms, exactly 12 grams of carbon. One mole of, so example, if you take 12 grams, you have one mole of carbon atoms. That means carbon atoms are extremely small. You count 6.02, 20 10 to the power 22 carbon atoms. You have one mole of carbon atoms. That equal to 12 grams. Think about oxygen. You count Avogadro's number of oxygen atoms, which is you count 6.022 into 10 to the power 23 carbon atoms. That equal to one mole of oxygen. That gives you, um, if you think about molar mass of oxygen, which is 16. Always in mole calculation, two things. Mass converted to mole, that goes to atoms. So mass to moles, moles to atoms. So you see here the conversion factor take the following forms, one mole. So example, let me take a question for you. It's easy. Calculate the number of copper atom in 2.45 mole of copper. Tell me how many copper atoms in one mole of copper. If you think of one mole, you have Avogadro's number of copper atoms. One mole of copper has 6.022 10 to the power 23 copper atoms. When you have 2 moles, 6.022 multiplied by 2. 3 moles, you multiply by 3. Similarly, if I ask how many moles in a mole of atoms in the 2.45, you multiply that number by Avogadro's number. See, 1 mole has this many, then this moles. So that's how I did it here. Okay. And then um, mass and moles. So you see, uh, let me get a question. Okay, so this is my question. How many copper atoms are in a copper penny with a mass of this much? If you think about one mole of copper, what is the mass? One mole of copper is 63.55. So then, um, before going to the moles, you can convert the mass to moles right so you take 3.1 grams you know one mole into 65.1 um, divide by uh, one mole into 63.55 you get the mass sorry you get the moles once you get the moles you multiply by the Avogadro's number to get the number of atoms so this is how I did it you get the mass the, in this part you find the number of moles because you see mass divide by molar mass always mass divide by molar mass will you give you number of moles and then you multiply by Avogadro's number to find the number of atoms so this is how you do the mole calculations and that is basically um, end of the chapter and I hope this video will be helpful thank you